Wow. Join us as we tackle our biggest adventure yet. Two days of exploring the Cahutta Wilderness in Tennessee and Georgia. No water, no power, no cell service. Just a Jeep and a few days of basic supplies. Finally completing my first overlanding trip and doing it alone. This is what I built the Jeep for. Nearly a hundred miles of off-roading, camping, and exploring. We'll follow the big frog loop counterclockwise, so the beginning of the video will be mostly in Tennessee, with the last half of the video being in Georgia. Back in Georgia, I will find a perfect secluded campsite. After enjoying dinner, building a campfire, get set up at nighttime and see the stars come out. I mean, so bright you can see the Milky Way. And the next morning, we'll be treated to yet another surprise, a awesome quarter moon rising and a sunrise to begin the day. With this being early November, the leaves have thinned out, but there is still plenty of bright orange and red fall colors to enjoy in the North Georgia mountains. So sit back and enjoy this epic adventure. I am Derek, and you are watching 1870 Off-Road. I mean, words just do not do this justice. My Lord, this is beautiful. This is our four hour commute condensed down to just 20 seconds. Going through downtown Atlanta right here. Recognize this stop sign, we are on the Georgia Traverse. Starting at the same place as our Labor Day ride, but going in the opposite direction. We are on the Georgia Traverse. We're inside of the Cahutta Wilderness. We're not actually on the loop yet. We gotta go right up here and take a right-hand turn, then we'll be on the loop. All right, I'm Aaron Dale. Down. Down. With the tires aired down to 20 PSI, we are now going to turn north on the big frog loop in the North Georgia mountains, heading towards Tennessee. Now this video is going to be a longer format than what I usually make. This one I'm going to catalog where many of the campgrounds are and also note some of the terrain along the process because this is my first time being in the area and I want to be able to come back and do this again in the future. So this is the video I'm going to use to come back and plan my route for future adventures. Anyways, we are here. We are going, yeah, going up here, looping around, coming down like that. So I want to stop by, I should see one of these, see what they're all about, because I haven't seen one yet. So this is giving you all your rules of the area, not to have big groups, you know, about your campfire, stuff like that, not being too close to water. Also, let you know there are bears active in the area, so uh, for emergency, call 911. <laughs> Uh, yeah. She's just telling you how to be a decent human, mostly. Got some uh, low hanging limbs back here. Don't have to navigate our way under this fallen tree here.
great I'm filming this is gonna be a four hour long video this place is beautiful we right now are in a little gully or a valley between the mountains we were on top of the mountains for a while but now we're riding alongside of a creek and uh god this place is just beautiful coming into the gutter right when you first end the loop and I passed another Jeep after that I took a right hand turn and I drove for half an hour and I passed the truck on the left hand side he was talking on his phone there's a spot on top of the mountain back there you get salsa overs but uh he looked like he was in camo so my guess is he's probably out here hunting because everything to the left is a WMA everything to the right is a national forest so obviously you can come out here to the left you can hunt all this area and he's probably trying to catch the last deer before rut starts rut should kick in probably here in a couple days it is uh november 2nd year of our lord 2023 so yeah all right i got the rambling i had to cut myself off there i grew up watching old westerns and star trek and both were very similar as people out by themselves exploring the frontier you know looks like some trees fell over so i drive over right here Seen a lot of that too. But anyways, yeah, we're uh, I grew up watching Star Trek, exploring the final frontier. And that's kind of what this reminds me of. You know, you're out and you just you're exploring. You kind of... Here we are. We have just crossed into Tennessee. Go dogs! <laughs> Make sure they know I'm here. Tumbling Creek campground. Got a couple people camping out here. Stop by and check this one out. All right, this is Tumbling Creek. We're in Tennessee. Nice area. Spot to remember if everyone want to come back and camp up here on this side one day. The Tennessee part up here is rough. Fun. I like it. Here's a little section back here was rutted out. It's pretty bumpy. Now, I would personally rate this entire trail as easy. None of it is hard. However, the Tennessee part is definitely a lot rougher than the Georgia part. And I don't know why, as soon as you cross the Tennessee state line, it is like they use a completely different material to make the trail out of. There's a lot of really big rocks. It's very bumpy. You gotta go a lot slower. And there's several big ruts. But again, if you're in a Jeep, even a Tacoma or a Bronco, this is no trouble for you to do this. But if you're in a Honda Civic, you're got no, you're not gonna make it in a no, Honda Civic. But yeah, something like this Jeep I'm in right here, and this is just a sport Jeep. You don't have to have big hundred thousand dollar Rubicon. You can have a nice, simple, cheap sport Jeep, and you can go hit the wilderness up here, and you can have a blast. As what this Jeep is built for. This time lapse really shows just how bumpy it is, but absolutely no trouble for an entry level sport Jeep. Here we got to fully flex out the Jeep going over this rut and stuff. Both tires, front and rear, up into the fenders and no rubbing. Now that was fun.
here I'm going to choose my line crossing this rut. Uh, but again, we'll have no trouble, but we will fully flex out the Jeep once again. Uh, and this is a spot where you want to disconnect your sway bars for sure. And that right there was the northernmost part of the loop in Tennessee. So from here, we're heading back south down towards Georgia. Right. Gotta remember which way I gotta go here, so give me one second. I think I'm turning left. Or I can go straight and get there faster. So we're gonna turn left that way. That's road 62. And if we went straight, I mean, that would be faster to go that way, but we're gonna go that way, but that way's fine. There's a new world coming state line right now that is georgia to the left tennessee to the right uh, the remember road. at the last split uh we took the rondy the windy route uh it looked more exciting it looked more fun but it looked longer and it was going to burn up some time but uh had we so we're going to turn left and continue on to where the straight route would have taken us Now entering the Kanasaga River area. I think this is my left hand turn right here. Oh, this is that bridge. this little bridge here we're heading back into Georgia now now that we're back in Georgia it's time to find the campsite for the evening Sunday, stop by and go to church. All 
right, we are off of the smooth gravel roads. Just made a turn on West Calpen Road off of old highway number two. So went through the little now, as you can tell, once you're back in Georgia, the trail gets a whole lot smoother. I swung by Lake Murray to see if you could, uh, they had spots to camp here. Justin, by that sign right there, you can't camp here. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a boat ramp. Anyways, there's the lake. This is Murray's Lake. Just off the Big Frog Loop. And I'm gonna keep on trucking, find a good spot to camp for the evening. After the disappointment of no camping, we're here. gonna turn around Murray's Lake, head out. We're continuing on the Big Frog Loop, which is part of the Georgia Traverse. And uh, I'm still gonna be heading towards Ballfield. I don't remember the name of the other one I was gonna go to. It's got waterfalls. I need to, as soon as I get closer, I'm gonna pull over and try to find that one. But I remember that one being small. Ball field's my backup. Ball field. I notice a fork in the trail ahead, and it's not on the map, so I figure it must be a campsite. Let's drive up this hill and scope it out. And wow, do we find a great campsite up here. So this spot's not marked on the map, but it was clearly trailed out. There was a bunch of streamers hanging up down there on the bottom. That's what caught my attention. And it's been graded out really good. So I'm guessing this is actually a campsite. Beautiful spot with the sunset. I'm not 100% certain where I am. I saw this and I said, let's go see what this goes to. I found this perfect secluded spot. And I said, this is this place. I'll come stay right here for the night. This is this is how I want to camp. I don't want to camp with a bunch of other people. I want to camp by myself or with the group I'm with, you know. All right, we're gonna set up camp, get the iPad out, figure out where I'm at for sure before I make sure make my final decision and stay here. But I I think I like this and I feel this spot. This is good. Let's get up high in the air. You can see what it's all around me. for sure. Something's about to come up right there, ain't it? That's where it's about to come up right there. You see it come up over the trees. <laughs> I 
The quarter moon and the sun rising means we are about to begin day number two. So while I'm setting up to make breakfast, I set the camera up to get a time lapse of the sunrise, and it was great. So unfortunately, there will not be a whole lot of footage from early morning. With it being 26 degrees at night, the Jackery would not charge the GoPro Pro or the phone, and the GoPro batteries are dead. The phone was about to die, so I got a little bit of footage in, and then the phone died, and I had to wait till I actually drove off in the Jeep to start charging everything. So lesson learned, when it's 26 degrees outside, the jackery won't charge. 75%, will, 75 will it record or will it shut off on me again within six seconds? Yep, maybe seven seconds so far. It may just be this cold. Cause Start of day two. It was a beautiful morning. It was cold last night. You got a quarter moon. The sun is up. We're cleaning up now, getting ready to go. Reheating me a uh, brisket sandwich from Bucky's on the propane grill and putting it up we've killed the fire we stacked up all the wood we didn't use over here for the next person cleaned up our mess there's no trash left anywhere once I get this stuff packed up in Jeep we are rolling out and uh, go finish the big frog loop we've got about a third of it left to do and then we'll head home um, having issues with the GoPro so hopefully I get to record some more I uh, couldn't get anything to charge last night because the jackery was too cold it wouldn't charge anything all right, all cleaned up, fire's out, stuff's cleaned up, trash is picked up, there's nothing left behind, I'm leaving the place better than I found it. Awesome campsite, but it's time to continue the trip. So here we go, time to roll out. Still early in the morning and the sun has not made it to this side of the mountain yet. There is no way this GoPro is going to do this view justice. But man, I'm getting my iPhone out taking pictures of this because this camera ain't going to do it justice. The GoPro uses a wide-angle lens, which is great for capturing stuff in motion, but when you're trying to get views of mountains that are miles away, uh, it doesn't work. So get the iPhone out, zoom in, and get much better pictures of the iPhone. So this is actually the Georgia Diverse. That's the big frog loop. We're going to head out about a mile in the Georgia Diverse to where there's a good picture spot is. a little offshoot off of the Georgia Traverse. We came off the Big Frog Loop, went on to the Georgia Traverse, and now we've offshoots from there. And according to the map, there's a really good lookout up here. We had to cross a creek. It looks like nobody has been on this section in a very long time. Uh, there's not even tire marks in the leaves up here. So I'm probably the first person to be here in a while. There's a lot of downed trees, water crossing. Let's go check it out. It's gonna be exciting. gonna overlook right now because all I see is a whole bunch of woods huh nice little campsite so it's a campsite it is not an overlook that's okay we'll keep on trucking now I know what it is let's go back to where we were at right. I am Harley 
Chloe, I am jeeping. That's close. Jeep speed jeeping. Service Road 17. I did not know this road closed January through March, uh, which really sucks because the best time for me to come up here and ride up here is January because that's when I don't have softball, that's when Christmas is over. And, anyways, we're back on the big frog loop now. It is, we're over a half mile off the ground. This is 2,600 feet right here, so just over a half mile off the ground. Nice spot with a view right there. And before we drive off, nice spot with a view right there. I didn't realize these mountains were this tall. Like where I live at, mountains are, you know, 1,500 feet at the most. I think Dowdell's Knob is 1,800 feet, but it's the exception. Yeah, I'm already at, I'm still at 2,600. Plus came down a little bit back here. But yeah, we're about to go up another 30, 40 feet right here. Man, look at that view. Look at that view. This is beautiful up here. Definitely glad I did this trip. I've never done it before. Definitely loving my first overlanding experience. It's been a blast. It is a uh, tight turn. Wow. Look at that. 2,700 feet now. Mill Creek Overlook is for this view right there. Holy cow. That is awesome. We're at about 28, maybe 2,900 feet. Jesus, that's a view. My Lord. Imagine all this was made in six days. What a view. Guess what? We gotta be looking towards Dalton. I'm gonna go back to the map, figure out where, where we're looking at from here. Uh, sun is behind us, so we're looking generally west, maybe southwest. Yeah, we're looking southwest from here, judging by where the sun is. There. Get the iPhone out, get some zoomed in pictures now. We're gonna see how well the iPhone does on a zoomed in view. Jeez, this is amazing. Wow, the other the overlook is breathtaking to say the least. But we got a lot of trails to cover, so let's hit the road. Now, 
this is the entrance to Lake Kanasaga. I've never been to this place, so I just want to drive by and check it out, which is what I did. So now we are headed back out. We've seen everything there is to see here that is open at least. Most everything here is closed. That's where we're at. It's called the Overflow Campground. We're resuming the big frog loop up your little detour. Alright, so this right here might be the ball field. It says it's primitive campsites. I believe this is what I was looking for. This is where I intended on staying last night, but I thought it was over there. I'm glad I did. I mean, I could have made it, but it would have been getting close to dark by the time I got here. So I didn't do it. But plenty of campsites here. Room for lots of people. good to know this is here because in the future this is a really good camping spot you need a spot to stay you can just pull up right here there's all these little campsites laid out rocks everywhere hiking trail nearby so a good spot to camp for next time i did not camp here this time but now i know where it's at and there is plenty of room here for lots of people all right let's keep on trucking we're 3500 feet so it's a pretty tall mountains around here southernmost point of the big frog loop So I passed numerous overlooks on this trip, but the best one was definitely the last. I mean, words just do not do this justice. My Lord, this is beautiful. We gotta be facing roughly south. Uh, we're, you know, pretty close to, we're already starting to head back north on the Big Frog Loops, pretty close to the south end. So, I mean, we're looking down towards the city and Atlanta and all that down there, but my lord. And yes, that haze you're seeing on the mountains is there. It's just humidity. Moisture is why they call it Big Frog. Big Frog. <laughs> That's why they call it the Smoky Mountains. I mean, look at it. looks like there's smoke all over them. God almighty, this is beautiful. You cannot put it in words. Good lord. Pull up. In the future, I'm going to set aside more time so I can enjoy these looks a little bit longer because, man, the views are just great here. Well, this would be the new Dyer Mountain Cemetery. A tree fell down the old one and tore it down. Well, not as nice as the old one, but it works. Fortunately, they say a tree fell down on it and uh, they tore it down. So it destroyed it and they had to tear the whole thing down and rebuild it. It was cool. I got an old video of it from the way it used to look. So you can uh, go back and watch Cash's Valley video from 2022. Uh, been right around August. Yeah, it was Labor Day weekend. You can see the uh, how it was built then. That sucks. Still beautiful though. I'm glad they at least rebuilt it. Even though they couldn't make it look like it used to. At least they rebuilt it and, you know, still have something up here. These photos are from 2020, and I got them from one of my friends in Wicked Jeeps. These people 
here. 1860s is when they were born, dying in 1940s. My God. These people, this is old. I wonder how old some of these other ones. That's a newer one. I said these other ones. Uh, here we go. Wow, 1896 to 1928. Oh, God, he was only 34. So since we're at Dyer Cemetery, you know what that means. We are getting near the end. And uh, good timing. The sun's getting lower and lower in the sky. And I still got to get home. And it's a long drive back down the middle of Georgia from here. So, and I got to go through downtown Atlanta. Oh, Lord. It's going to be traffic by the time I get there. So, in the meantime, let's, uh, we're about to get back to filming and get back to riding. Because we don't have time to stop and smell the roses. All right. I'll be leaving Dyer Cemetery. Bikes caught back up to me. They go another way though. You'll recognize this overlook from the Cassius Valley video from back in Labor Day weekend of 2022. Big hill right there. That's the one I went up where this all started yesterday. Air and the tires back up because this is the end of the Cahutta Wilderness. Here we are, back where it all started yesterday. And man, this is beautiful. We did it, we made it. We got out of here and we did it in two days. Can't believe we did it. So the goal was to complete this trail ride in two days. That gives me one night of camping. We barely did it. I mean, the sun's getting down. Man, I'll tell you, if I get to do this again, I'm definitely going to have two nights of camping. Uh, we got to explore a little bit. I didn't miss everything, but there were some times I was getting it. I was really pushing. When I hit smooth sections of the trail, I was pushing it. I was easily doing 25 miles an hour trying to make up time because I knew I was falling behind schedule. And uh, that made it up. We got out of here. Now I should still be able to get home by the time it gets dark. I mean, it's about 2 in the afternoon. Judging by the sun, yeah, it's quarter to 2. So it's quarter to 2. I should be getting home right about dark, which would be good. And, uh, man, what a blast, guys. This is uh, 1870 off-road. This is the Big Frog Loop. My first overlanding experience I've ever done in my Jeep. It was awesome. It was totally worth it. Um... All the years of camping I did as a kid, going hunting, definitely helped. Cause, and uh, granted, it's been a long time since I did it, and I've never done it in a Jeep before. This is definitely new. I mean, we went down there in a Jeep, but we didn't do overlanding. You know, that was more camping in one area and hanging out all day. This was driving. We covered two states. I believe we went 90 miles the way we went, because there's a 75 mile route and 90 mile route. We took the 90, the long one. Uh, Tennessee was the only part of the trail that really was. I wouldn't say treacherous. I mean, it was easy. But if you're in something other than Jeep, it was treacherous. There was a lot of dips and ruts and rocks you got to climb over. It was very bumpy, but uh, everything else was really easy. Nothing to it. You just need to be off, off the ground a little bit. I mean, we passed little crossover cars a couple of times. A lot of pickup trucks. You know, they, they do this perfectly fine. So, you only had a couple spots I had to choose my line. That was all in Tennessee. Either way, I would do this again. The Big Frog Loop was a blast. I can't wait to get to do this one again. Definitely with two nights camping. 1870 off road, G speed jeeping. Wow. And that concludes my first overlanding adventure. What a blast this was. A lot of lessons learned along the way since I'd never done this before, obviously. Um, always bring more food, always bring more water. I actually wore out my drag link. Going home, I picked up a wobble. You'll, so you'll see in future videos, I'm going to upgrade all my steering to metal cloak steering. That's actually already done by the time I'm editing this, and it, it works great. I haven't started doing that video yet. Uh, we're also starting Christmas parades now, with it being Christmas time. So, you know, get ready to watch all these videos coming. And uh, definitely going to come back and do more overlanding. This trip was amazing. And uh, just lesson learned with being cold, though, it killed my GoPro batteries. I actually had to buy new batteries for my GoPro. The cold weather just killed it trying to charge them with it being 25 degrees outside did not work so little small things like that you learn by getting out there and doing it you know you don't learn how to do this stuff sitting at home on your couch watching tv you gotta get out there and hop in a jeep and go explore the world
uh, you know, creation's huge. So get out there and enjoy it and explore it and have a blast. Stuff like this was actually pretty easy to do. You don't have to have a big six, you know, figure, $100,000 built off-road rig to do this. Just a basic, you know, stock-ish sport Jeep. You know, mild lifts, a couple skid plates, and I'm out there ready to rock and roll. Thanks for watching 1870 Off-Road. I am Derek, and there will be more videos to come. And I almost forgot, I, Jeeps be jeeping. I also forgot, Jeep be jeeping. I mean, <laughs> words just do not do this justice. And I'm Harley. My Lord, this is beautiful.